If I had just done it this way or that way, because you're still holding on to some version of reality, some timeline in which it worked out differently. You're attached to some idea of what could have been instead of what is, and that is taking up your bandwidth. This is the deep dive with Adam Roa. What is up, deep divers? Hello, hello, Adam Roa here, and today is another deep dive musing. We are gonna dive into some lyrics from my new song, Go. Uh, if you haven't heard it yet, check it out. It's out on Spotify, Apple Music, all the places. And um, the, the song is about wanting someone back who won't even really talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Kind of uh, the cold shoulder sort of thing, but saying, I just, I just want, I want you back so badly. I'm trying so hard. And there's a lyric specifically that I want to unwrap and dive into today to give you some insight into what goes into a song like this. And um, the, the lyric is, you say you can't take no more. Well, who you got me mistaken for? I love you too much to ever let you go. I forgive you, babe. Please come back home. And so the theme around go really, and what I learned about myself is around attachment and this idea of, I love you too much to ever let you go. Specifically, I love you too much to ever let you go. And I'm going to uh, use this as an opportunity to talk about the um, energetics around uh, attachment and holding on to, to someone in your life like that. Because at times, and especially at this time in my life, I was holding on because I thought that was the healthy thing to do. I thought that's, I mean, that's what you do when you love someone, you, you hold on no matter what, like in Titanic, when you're just like holding on to the, the wood and just like, I'll never let you go. And then he like drifts off as a ice frozen dude dying. Um, anyway, point is, <laughs> the point is that there is a um, aspect, an energetic aspect to attachment that is preventing you from receiving so much of what you're calling into your life. And so uh, today's podcast is going to be unraveling that through the lyrics. And before I get into that, I just want to uh, encourage you, remind you to please subscribe and follow on all of the platforms, whatever platform you're listening on, on it takes like 30 seconds, just pull up the app, hit subscribe, follow on Spotify. If you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button. It it really means so much to me. Um, and thank you for the support of, of this. And one of my favorite things, by the way, is hearing from you what you got out of the podcast. So if you ever post on social media about what you've learned, please tag me in it. I love to reshare those. And I just love to see the impact that this makes. So thank you very much. Let's get back to attachment. <laughs> so when I look at attachment, um, there are there is a level of romanticism around being so in love with someone that you will hold on through thick and thin, no matter what. It doesn't matter what sort of obstacles come your way. You will get through it together because your love is that strong and that deep. Um, that's a beautiful Hollywood narrative. <laughs> and uh However, what it does is it creates these unrealistic expectations of what we are supposed to do when we are in love with someone. It creates this uh, idea that if you're willing to walk away from a relationship, it's because you didn't love them enough. But what about the idea that you love them so much that you will walk away? Can that be true as well? Think about it for just a moment. Could you love someone so much that you are walking away because of how much you love them? I know that for me, in certain aspects of, of a past relationship, when I was going through depression, I uh, felt like I could not show up as a partner in a way that made me proud. I felt like I was they were getting of a tiny portion of the good Adam and mostly the sad, depressed um, Adam that, that I was judging and shaming and guilty myself for every single day. And so the loving choice for me was to say, okay, I gotta, I gotta not put this on her. This is mine to carry. And so I need to walk away. Later on, obviously uh, in, in the relationship, there's wh what inspired 
this new track go um and this line and i love you too much to ever let you go because in the relationship the conversation was always like do you love me enough to fight for me will you hold on will you express how deeply you want this to work and so i had developed a narrative that if i love this person enough i will hold on I will, no matter what happens, no matter if I'm lied to, no matter if it seems unhealthy, like I will hold on. And here's the aspect of this attachment, the energetics I was talking about earlier. Every single thing in your life is taking up energetic bandwidth. Everything, every person in your life, every thought that you have, every emotion you experience, every item of clothing, every every bit of food in your refrigerator everything in the drawers of your 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 dresser all of it is taking up energetic bandwidth and we all have a finite amount of energy at any given point in time so what do i mean by that let's say that you right now have 100 band energetic points, right? Every article of clothing takes up half a point. Everything in your fridge takes up like point one of a point or whatever. You add it all up. If you are at 99 points, if you've used up 99% of your energetic bandwidth, then what do you think you can actually call in to your space? How much room do you think you have for new opportunities, new relationships, more abundance in your life? Your calling more in isn't what expands you. You expand to create space for what you're calling in. I'm going to repeat that because so many people on this planet have it backwards. They think that if they get more, it will expand their capacity to hold more. That's not how it works. You expand your capacity to hold more and the universe will fill that space. How do, how do we know that? Because energy, it's all energy. Money is energy. Uh, emotions, thoughts, it's all energy. Food is energy. All of it. You are a vessel for energy. There is a like a, a garden hose. I've used this analogy a lot. We are a garden hose that chant this energy channels through. The size of your hose. How big are you? How much can you hold? And by the way, this isn't I don't want you, to, I'm, I'm simplifying this into like you have a hundred energy points, but this changes moment to moment, day to day. This changes moment to moment, day to day based on, did you get enough sleep? Did you, what did you eat? How much um, are you holding on to things that aren't serving you? How much are you um, elevating your own vibe through things like meditation or yoga or exercise in each and every moment, your bandwidth is shifting. However, one of the biggest ways that we limit the availability of energy for ourselves is through attachments. What is up, deep divers? Pardon the interruption. I just wanted to take a moment to let you know about the Create community. It is the collective renaissance of education, art, transformation, and entertainment. And we are having live online events every single week. And this is where I actually teach my energetic wizardry class every week alongside some of the most epic personal development facilitators that I personally know. And if you have been looking for the place where you can go like a modern mystery school, like where you can go and learn about things like business and astrology and gene keys and the energetics of how to create your reality, this is the place for you. This is a growing community. We would love to have you visit thecreatecommunity.com to join through attachment. And we could be simple, right? With like, I'm attached to this shirt. I don't want to get rid of it, even though I never wear it. So my closet is full of things that I never wear. We get to think about people who um, do that with food <laughs> and their, their fridge is full of so many sauces and so many things, things that they never use that just go bad. Many of those things, and I've, I was this person for a while, many of these things live in the fridge that are They've, they've already expired. They've already gone bad. You're never going to use them again, but they're taking up energetic bandwidth. And this is especially true in, in our relationships. In, with that boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, mother, father, friend that you are holding on to and saying, I won't let this go. After a breakup, how long do you spend just dreaming about your ex? 
and saying, man, if I had just been this, it would have worked out better. If I had just done it this way or that way, because you're still holding on to some version of reality, some timeline in which it worked out differently. You're attached to some idea of what could have been instead of what is, and that is taking up your bandwidth. Your energy is being pulled in a direction of, of something that isn't even here in the present moment. And as you hold on to that, you are preventing someone new to enter into your life and not just a romantic partner. That might be a, your new dream job. That might be a new friend. That might be more financial abundance in the form of clients or, um, of, or of just like, the opportunities that are available to you of someone saying, Hey, do you want to come travel with me here? Or would you like to do this cool photo shoot or like all of these aspects, every single one can only come into your space when you're a vibrational match to it and to become a vibrational match to something new that you don't currently have. You must have the space for it to be a part of your life. You will not be given something uh, that you don't have room for. It won't even present itself. And on a very biological level, by the way, physiologically, because uh, I love tying this together, th that's because your brain won't even pattern recognize it. You're at max capacity. We all know that feeling of overwhelm. And you're just like, I, I have no room. I can't think about anything else. My brain, when I'm personally in overwhelm and I have all these different facets that I'm like, oh, I have this to do this and I got to do this, this. My brain is not in the creative space of having new ideas. I'm not in the energetic of innovation and creativity. I'm in the energetic of just trying to get through the list of things that are right in front of me. That's the physiological, neurological example of how you don't call in the new opportunities when you're focused on those things. So similarly, when we're attached in a relationship, and especially with an ex in this way, we are holding on to something that is taking away our ability to pattern recognize our own growth and bring in new potentials for our lives. And so if you have a desire for something new in your life, create the space for it. You can start really simply by going through your fridge, going through your closet, going through the drawers in your room and in your house, going through your garage or your shed or your storage unit or whatever, and getting rid of things that you know are not in alignment with who you are now and that are taking up space that you no longer want to be occupied. You want something new for yourself, create the space. And so then the next step is to take a look at the relationships you have in your life. Take a uh, inventory of where your thoughts are going. Who are you thinking about? What are you thinking about? Where are you in resistance to what is? And you're holding on to an idea of what was or what you wish would be. Because all of that is taking up your energy, your energy energetic bandwidth that you can free up. And once you do that, you will be amazed at how quickly something pops in. It's like a vacuum. The universe is abundant. You hear this in personal development, you hear it in, in new age spirituality, like it's infinitely abundant, which means that when you create space for more energy, the universe is going to give it to you. You're not freeing up this energy and now you're just an empty void. You don't have to worry about that. The moment you free up the space, something new will drop in. It happens every single time. And so what this is about is not emptying yourself out and having less. This is about emptying out and getting more aligned, having more things in your life that are representative of who you desire to be in this now moment. Thank you for doing this work. Thank you for taking a look at this stuff. Thank you for releasing the old to create space for the new. When we look out at the collective right now, one of the biggest issues is that the systems that are in place, people are holding on to these archaic systems, refusing to let them go, refusing to let go of the old education systems or medical systems or political systems. And it's causing so much pain and suffering because we've outgrown it. 
And yet it's all fractal. It is all a representation of what's going on at the individual level. And so when we can learn how to release the old in our own lives and create space for something new to show up that's more in alignment, we are learning how to do that and play that role within the collective. And we will start to see that shift happen in the systems that are governing our planet. I hope this gives you an idea of just how important this is, not just for yourself individually, but how important this work is for the entire planet. You are doing this for yourself first and foremost, and as a result, you are positively impacting the rest of us. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for listening to this and unpacking some of the lyrics. I'm going to continue to do this and share with you what goes into songs like Go, which is out. I hope you go listen to it. And um, yeah, I'm just so grateful to be on this journey with you and to be able to rise together because that's what this is. We're in this together. Deep divers. I'm with you. You're with me. We're in it. We're a team. And always, in always, you are seen you are heard and you are loved.